Welcome to Sastery in the Making, the podcast that features the people who made the software world what it is today and the leaders who are shaping the future of technology. Here's your host, Matt Wallach. Okay, I have some questions for you. I want to know who should be thinking about cybersecurity and what is driving the need for cybersecurity these days? And if you realize you need it, how do you even get started with cybersecurity? I am really excited to talk about all of that today. This is Sastery in the Making. I am your host, Matt Wallach, and I am delighted to be joined by my guest today, Andrew Rinaldi. Andrew, how are you doing? Great, Matt. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'm glad you're here. Let me tell everybody about Andrew. First of all, he's the co-founder at Defendify. This is an award-winning platform that streamlines cybersecurity. That's why he is the expert on this. These guys do some great things. We're going to dive into that. He's also a partner and founder at Steady Vision, so he's got a lot going on, and I am really excited to chat with him. So, Andrew, once again, thank you so much for coming on the show. Awesome to be here. Awesome. So tell me about what's going on lately and what's coming up for you guys at Defendify. Yeah, well, things have been crazy, as I would imagine for everybody else with you know everything going on in the world today. Um, you know, pandemic and you know cybersecurity, obviously top of mind for so many people. You mm-hmm. know, for us as a startup, growing fast, been a little bit of a roller coaster ride, and just keep growing. And you know, it's the ups and downs and challenges of day to day running a business and launching new product and new features. Got some pretty cool stuff going on. Uh, one of the more recent things that we came out with is a thing we call breach detection response, which is kind of like a 24-7 monitoring detection response um, solution that a lot of people have been looking for. So that's been pretty exciting for us. And with that, we've got um, you know about 13 tools in our in our platform now. That's fantastic. So what led you to start Defendify? How did that whole thing come about? Yeah, such a great question. Uh, I roll back about four years ago when I was having some conversation with my now business partner, Rob, and we were both coming out of some a couple of businesses that we were running and you know looking at cybersecurity as a topic and trying to figure out how do you how do you get cybersecurity? What is cybersecurity? How do you get it and apply it to a, a smaller business? Um, and when you start to look around, there's really not a lot out there. It's, you know, most of the stuff that's out there is geared towards the enterprise. Mm-hmm. Um, it's pretty complicated, very expensive. Uh, you can pay high-end consultants and, and they can come in, but it's, uh, again, for a smaller organization, even a you know, multi-hundred person organization that can add up pretty quick and not have the remediation and, you know, uh, solutions that you need in place. So, you know, that's kind of an eye-opener for us when we started looking at that and said, geez, we need to be able to fill that void in the market. How do we do that? And you know, we ended up starting at the time a, a consulting business where we were going to help bring kind of enterprise level s- solutions to the smaller businesses. And mm. we did that. And, um, you know, right away, we got a lot of traction and realized this isn't really scalable. You've heard this story before, right? The consulting firm goes platform. I had a background. Lots of times. Yeah, I had a background in kind of development and, and marketing and, and Rob, my partner, was coming out of security and security integration. And, you know, together we just said, you know, if we could digitize this consulting practice and bring it to the world, then we'd really have something revolutionary. And that's when we came up with the idea of Defendify and yeah, went all in on it. That is fantastic. So let's talk about, so you talked about how, you know, kind of means different things. What exactly is Cybersecurity, I mean, it means different things to different people. So what is it? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, people don't really know what it is a lot of the time. You know, some some folks think it's uh, a widget that you plug in. It's like antivirus and a firewall and you're good to go. Uh, others just think it's a concept. Others don't think it's really important. Um, so it's got a lot of different meanings for a lot of different people. But what it really is, is it's kind of a core function in your business, cybersecurity. It's got a lot of moving parts. It's not just one thing. There is no magic bullet, unfortunately, and you know, as evidenced by so many breaches, large and small. So the way we look at it is it's a core function of your business. How do you make it a function of your business and prioritize it at the leadership level? And then how do you treat it like a posture? You know, We kind of think about it like your health. Um, it's not something you can just do one day and be good to go. You have to do it every day. It's, it's really a model of, you know, continuous improvement and something that always is, has to be looked at and budgeted for. And I think that's the change that's happening in the world today. It's going from, you know, cybersecurity is kind of nice to have for some people to, you don't really have an option. It, now's the time you have to start to employ some of those things in your you know day-to-day business. 
Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. But isn't cybersecurity, I think if most people think it's mostly for enterprise. So who exactly needs it? Who is this force, like for primarily? Yeah, it, it started with the enterprise. I think they have got you know bigger budgets and more you know bandwidth and security teams and things of that nature. But the attacks we're seeing today are now on every size business, all the way down to a even a small mom and pop. But wow. yeah, you know, it's, it's because everybody's got sensitive data. You know, it's really hard to find a business these days that doesn't do some sort of digital business. It doesn't have to be e-commerce. It's just storing your files digitally. You know, emails, things like that. Um, data storage, backups all the way down to a recipe for a, a restaurant or a food manufacturer. You know, it's it's the things that people don't think about that they would never want other people to find that attackers are after. So it's really anybody doing business these days. It's it's kind of a wide thing. And that's, I guess, part of the opportunity and challenge for Defendify is what we're doing applies to so many businesses at the same time. Yeah, you know, how do you get to all those businesses and, you know, have a loud enough voice for people to, to hear what you're saying. And that's, you know, what we're working on on a daily basis. I work with a lot of my clients on that, figuring out who are your ideal customers and niching down. Have you guys figured out who your niche is or your ICP to get to your ideal best fits? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, we've been focusing on smaller businesses and that term gets thrown around a lot. You know, a, a 200 person company, a 50 person company, they don't really necessarily want to be called a small business, but you know, technically by the SBA, it's really a, a company under 500 employees. And those are some really healthy sized businesses. Mm -hmm. For us, it's really any anybody without a security team. So small businesses, small to mid-sized organizations have security um, needs, but they don't have security professionals on staff. And they may have an IT team. They may have two, three, four, five IT uh, folks on staff, and they're dealing with help desk and network and infrastructure and some of the cybersecurity stuff, but they can't really roll out the comprehensive cybersecurity program. So for us, it's anybody that's got an IT resource, whether it be one person, whether it be outsourced IT, whether it be a team of five, but doesn't have a full security team. And that's a lot of businesses because it's not that they don't want to do it. It's just that they can't. They don't have the bandwidth. They don't have the wherewithal. It could cost millions mm. of dollars to set up that team. So they have to look for you know solutions like Defendify. So how exactly does Defendify help with teams of that size? Yeah, so what it does is it takes, right now we have 13 tools in Defendify, and it puts them all in one place. One of the challenges that the, the teams out there that are trying to deal with cybersecurity are facing is it's so many different vendors, so many different mm -hmm. products, managing that stack, um, you know, and being able to do that within a budget, it's just almost impossible. So we've got 13 tools all in one spot. There's hundreds of cybersecurity technologies out there in the world today and we've boiled down to the core that really need to be get started with and to run your uh, the core of your cybersecurity program and then yeah. layer on some of those other things afterwards that's great so if somebody doesn't really know where to go and they see all these things and it's kind of overwhelming they can just go to defendify and it's got everything right there yeah you got it Absolutely. And Sweet. it'll help to kind of point out some of the additional things that you might need. Yeah, there's definitely some baseline technology like antivirus and firewalls that most organizations will have. So we're not going to provide that solution. But this is, you know, plans, policies, procedures, employee awareness training, scanning technologies, breach detection and response, all those things bundle in in one spot. That's amazing. Uh, you talked earlier about some of these attacks. Can you tell us more about that? Like what is driving the need for cybersecurity? What's out there that people need to protect or to protect from? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people don't think that they have sensitive information to protect in the first place. But you know, one of the ways that we like to look at it is you know, take something in your business and ask yourself, would I put that on a public website and care about it if other people saw it? And if the answer to that is yes, then you have sensitive information. Uh, you know, most companies have employees and vendors and legal and HR. All that stuff is stuff that you need to protect. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the barrier to entry in a, for an attacker is just so low now. It's not like uh, back in the day when you had to rob a bank or something like that. You just go online and you can find small businesses all over the world. You can research them. And, and in hours, you know a pretty good deal about a small business, um, you know, a 200 person manufacturer, say, you know, we're in Portland, Maine, down the road. I could find out everything about them. Um, you know, what's going on with them? Who are they doing business with? You know, maybe they just, at their contractor, they just launched a big program that had press on it. So the attacks are easy to launch and that makes everybody a target. Yeah, that's very true. You're in Portland, Maine? Yeah, Portland, Maine. 
Oh, it's beautiful. I've been up there, especially in the summer. You don't you don't have that New England accent, though. <laughs> I guess I, I snuck by with that one. But uh, yeah, I'm from <laughs> from Massachusetts originally. Still don't have the hard Massachusetts accent either. But uh, yeah, discovered Portland's a couple hours north of Boston. It's just it's a really cool spot, actually. A little bit of a tech innovation hub going on in Portland that, that right? not not everybody knows about. Yeah, there's there's quite a bit of startup life going on. That's awesome. That's really cool to hear. Um, I want to know what is the best way for an organization to get started with cybersecurity. If they realize, okay, we've got a problem, what should they do? Yeah, it's a great question. Yeah, I, th I would say one of the biggest questions that people have is, you know, where do I stand? Do I need cybersecurity? What does it mean? So we've got some tools built in there for, you know, they're called assessments or running kind of a risk assessment on yourself to see, you know, what's what's my grade? We, we letter grade it so people understand it. That's kind of part of our concept is to simplify things down so you can streamline the conversation around cybersecurity. And if I can take a, an assessment and understand that I'm a, a C minus, okay, why am I a C minus? And maybe... How does that map to some of the government uh, and regulatory um, frameworks that are out there? And what are some recommendations to do that? That's really where people should start. Um, you know, you don't want to just go buy technology and pop it in and hope it all works because we know that doesn't work. So it's going through that process and saying, all right, I'm going to dedicate time and resources to evaluate what I'm doing, where I need help, what other things I need to be doing, and you know, just going from there. And that's you know, really an assessment. Yeah, that's really helpful. So who in the organization should be doing this? Is it the founder, or the CTO? Is there anybody in particular? Yeah, it's, yeah, it can be a little bit of both. Um, oftentimes, the cybersecurity stuff, even though it's not all tech, uh, you know, running awareness training programs and developing policies, it, you, it often comes back to IT. So what we're seeing is it's a conversation at the leadership level. Um, you know, the C-level, the C-suite, talking about what it means because it's a business issue. It's a socioeconomic issue. Mm -hmm. It's a continuity issue. It's a brand and a reputation issue. And then it's also bubbling up in the IT realm, CTOs, uh, IT directors, IT managers, all the way down to just, you know, IT um, personnel. So I think it's a collaborative conversation. And when I said earlier that I think you know, right now is when we're seeing it become really kind of a function in the business as opposed to just a, a line item. It's 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 begging some really interesting questions for leadership teams and technology um, staff, and they're getting together to tackle this this issue together. Yeah, that's that's well said. I'm glad that they're doing that. I, you brought up something that's really important: awareness training. You know, part of what it is is making sure everybody on the team, whatever role they're in understands what's at stake and what could possibly be exposed and what needs to be protected and and how to do that. I'm sure there's more than just the actual devices and tools that you've talked about that you guys have. The team also needs to be aware. It's, is that right? That's 100% right. Um, you know, one of the philosophical kind of components that we talk about is a culture of cyber defenders. Everybody's mm. part of that. You know, I think it's something like 90% or more of, of um, attacks start with phishing emails. You know, that's just an awareness thing. What is a phishing email? Wow. Why is it coming? They catch the best of the best with a, a really well-crafted, um, well-researched phishing email. So, you know, we do things like, uh, you know, training and we send videos, maybe two to three minute videos once a month with a little quiz on it, trying to make them a little sure. bit more engaging. We do we do like things like phishing simulations where you know phishing uh, attacks are, are sent at the employees and if they click their spot training and there's really wow that's amazing I love it you're like auditing them in the moment that's fantastic a hundred percent and I think that the uh, the leadership team needs to look at that and say you know if somebody does click on something it's it's not all about reprimanding it's about all right this is an awareness issue what does that mean why did that happen we spot train them let's see if we can decrease. Um, the rate of you know click throughs and engagement on those things over time, which that's what Defendify helps you do. And it's just making people more prepared. And back to the health concept is it's changing every day. So it's not something where you all right, I did it, I did a couple of videos, I'm good to go. And that's how a lot of businesses treat it. It's something we have to be doing on a regular basis. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's constant improvement, constant knowledge amongst the team to make sure everybody's always aware, right? A hundred percent. You got it. I love it. I love it. Well, you guys have been really successful growing this business. So what would you say, Andrew, were some of the key things that you guys did along the way to get Defendify off the ground and get it to be really kicking off? 
Yeah, that's always an interesting one. For me, it's it's about alignment and coming out the gate, you know, being in the same place, the kind of the mind space with your, I have a co-founder and, and the team that you hire around you. So it really started with core values and vision. And it sounds like the basics of a business, but a lot of people kind of jump ahead of that or they come back to it later on in the game. And I had, I've had i got some experience with a, a system called EOS, which is the Entrepreneurial Operating System. It's a business methodology to run your business on. And I saw some you know, great success with that in the past. And we decided to roll that out from day one. And it allowed me and my co-founder, Rob, and the employees that we were hiring to get really super aligned out the gate. And that let us kind of, you know, hit the ground running, have have the right people around us, solve problems a lot quicker. And that that's really my biggest recommendation for people is think about your core values, think about where you're going, think about the vision and then use that as a lens for which you evaluate the market and hire the people that are going to help you make that vision a reality. And when you do that, it seems so basic. So many people don't do it. You see tremendous things happen. I agree. I've seen that as well with my teams. It's super important to get a base understanding and everybody on the same page of those core values because you can kind of use that as your foundation and build from there. So I think it's critical, but a lot of companies, a lot of teams, leaders don't do it, but it's really, really helpful. I love that you guys did that. Yeah, super important. I think one of the things that people, one of the fails in that is a lot of companies will have core values that are aspirational and not authentic, what we want to be versus what we are. But when you look yourself in the mirror and you figure out who you are and who you need around you that is similar to for what the company needs for its value system, and it's just amazing what happens versus kind of like what we want to be, which you know can be hard to navigate. That's the beautiful part about it. When you start realizing that the core values really do speak to who you are and really are all about you and the culture within the company, yes, then you can hire to it, right? You can make sure, does this person that we're looking at fit our core values? And when you get them and they're that strong, it's really, really helpful within the hiring process, especially. That's awesome. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. That's perfect. So what advice do you have for other software founders who might be just getting started? Um, one, I want to ask you for cybersecurity, but then two, for growing their business. Yeah, definitely. So on the cybersecurity front, uh, make it a priority. You know, like I said, it's it's a part of your business. And it's actually, you know, for a lot of businesses starting to become table stakes. Um, mm -hmm. Compliance is coming, regulations coming. And if it's not coming for a specific company, what happens is the bigger companies that they're selling to, the, the corporations and the government, you know, the DOD, the government entities, they're basically saying, all right, if you're not doing it yourself, if you want to do business with you know companies that we're partnered with, then you have to be able to meet certain criteria. So I, I would say it's a it's table stakes. Cybersecurity shouldn't be looked at as you know a nice to have. It's a must have. If you think about that now, it actually could even be a competitive advantage if you uh, put it at the fore um, and treat it with the right priority. So that that's on the cybersecurity front. You know, get started. Um, don't be afraid. You don't have to do it all at once. You don't have to overspend on it. Just you know, roll up the sleeves and dig in. I love um, that. Yeah, probably dovetails with the business side a little bit, where it's basically same thing. You know, work hard, but work smart. Um, expect the unexpected. You know, startup life, it's crazy. It's a roller coaster ride. There are pivots. There's one thing we know for sure, and that's that things are going to change and not going to happen the way you expect them to. So have that expectation going in. Don't be afraid to fail. And just don't give up. You just got to keep on, keep on cracking at it. I love it. Yeah. Like they say, the only constant is change. And in the startup <laughs> world, that is so, so true. You guys know that. And, uh, you know, I've seen that with my startups and all the ones I advise as well. I think it's critical to be ready to, to face that change, be ready to pivot. But like you said, you know, especially from the cybersecurity standpoint, you've got to, you know, make sure that you're protected so that when you have to make a change like that, you're ready and you're able to do it. Yeah, it makes so, so much sense. I love it. Well, this has been awesome, Andrew. I really appreciate it. Once again, we've been talking with Andrew Rinaldi from Defendify. Andrew, how can people learn more about you and Defendify? Yeah, absolutely. If, check out our website. It's www.defendify.io. Um, and if anybody's interested in jumping in on, you know, where do I stand? Getting that assessment. We do have a, a set of free tools that you can download and check out at uh, defendify.io slash essentials. 
um, so you can get started right away and just see kind of where you stand, you know, run a couple scans and, you know, get things moving and then grow from there. That's beautiful. And we'll put those links into the show notes and on the links below the video if you're watching the video as well. But Andrew, this has been awesome and really informational for me. So I really appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, Matt, it's been great to be here. Appreciate the opportunity and uh, let's uh, do it again. All right. Sounds great. So for everybody else who are watching and listening on the podcast, thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe. Once you hit that subscribe, you'll be notified so that you get you know, notifications, you get insights, you get new episodes every single week. So you have creators and innovators and leaders like Andrew giving you practical advice and tips that you can apply right away. Go ahead and subscribe. That way we will see you every time. And for now, we will see you next week. Take care.